What's up guys, in today's video, I'm gonna take you along my process. Sorry about that, uh, that was my noisy air compressor. Anyways, uh, back to what we were talking about. In this video, um, we're actually gonna address that. All right, let me go show you real quick. All right, you guessed it. We're building an air compressor shed. Now let's get to it. Because there's so many great step-by-step -step videos out there on how to build a shed, instead, I'm gonna explain my thought process, things to avoid, and some things I would have done differently. There are two main reasons why I made this shed. One, to free up the limited space in my home garage. Secondly, I have a CNC plasma table now, and with the air compressor, it'll be running a lot longer than normal in the shop. And if you're anything like me, having to hear that noise constantly while working on projects and filming would drive me nuts. Therefore, having a shed to enclose the air compressor to keep the noise out and free of space in my shop was a win in my book. Originally, I was just gonna go out and get a store-bought shed. I looked at the plastic resin type sheds, but figured it might rattle a little bit from the vibrations of the air compressor. And I wasn't too confident on how the plastic would help dampen the noise when compared to a wood shed. Then I looked into a four by wood shed from Lowe's and it checked almost all the boxes. But after reading the reviews and seeing how it was constructed and the materials used, I passed on it. Not satisfied with what was locally available, I decided to take matters into my own hands and design and build one from scratch. When I first started modeling this up in SolidWorks, I made it three by six based on the parameters of where it would be installed. I thought having the additional space would be nice for storage. However, to save some costs, I decided I would just make a dedicated 3x4 shed for my air compressor. Once I was satisfied with the design layout, I grabbed my material cut list from the plans I created and headed to my local hardware store. If you'd like to build your own 3x4 or 3x6 shed, I left links in the video description. With that out of the way, let's go build this thing. I also decided to pick up this framing nailer as well as Home Depot was running a great tool promo. This isn't necessary, but after building this shed, I'm glad I had one. For the shed, I went with the concrete base, mainly to support the weight of the air compressor. After waiting about three days, I took the forms out, then let the slab cure for another four days before I would work on it. While I was letting the slab cure, I continued inside the shop with the framing. To have the least amount of waste, I started with the longer back wall first. I began to lay out making sure the crown side were all phasing up. I then marked out the top and bottom plate where the studs would need to be placed. To nail them in, I used three and a quarter framing nails. I also used some pressure treated wood I had laid around for the bottom plate. I then moved on to frame the wall for the door. I rinsed and repeat this and built the sidewalls. Man, I love the power of this cordlessness uh, Milwaukee framing nailing gun. One thing I would have done different here was to have a continuous bottom plate for the door opening. This would have helped make it easier to square up the walls. Then once squared, I would have trimmed the excess away. To attach all four walls together, I temporarily clamped them and adjusted them until they were all close to square. Then screw them together using three and a half screws. Also, I want to say I wasted a lot of time trying to get it leveled and squared, but I found out I could dial it in later when I installed the siding sheets. To anchor the frame down to the concrete, 
I used some Tapcon concrete anchors. I pre-drilled the bottom plate, then set my drill to hammer mode and drilled through with a hammer drill bit. Next was to install the double top plate. This will help secure and tie in all the four walls and will provide additional support when the rafters get installed. Next was to install the siding. End up going with 4x8 LP smart side with 4 inches on centered pattern. I marked the center and measured 36 inches and trimmed both ends. I didn't have a track saw so I used the OSB roofing sheet as a guide for my circular saw. Then cut the back sheet and the front door sheet. Nice. To install it onto the wall frame, I placed some scrap wood underneath for the shed siding to rest on. For the bottom edge of the sheet, I let it extend about three quarter below the bottom plate. The bottom overlap will keep the water from running down the shed walls onto the shed floor. I started with the right side first and made the sheet flush with the lower corner of the framing. Then I nailed in my first nail at the lower right corner using 2 inch galvanized nails. Then pushed and pulled the upper corner of the framing wall until it was flush with the top corner of the sheet. Then install the second nail at the upper right corner of the wall frame. Then move the top plate so that it was parallel to the top of the sheet. Then nail in the third nail at the upper left corner of the frame. These steps are super important as it makes the wall square and locks the wall in place. Once the siding was attached at those three points, I nailed in the rest into the studs. I then installed the back sheet like I did the first, then the left, Then the door sheet last. I then moved on to the wrappers, which are the structural component for the roof. Then align them up and fasten them down using three and a half screws. Next, I should install the sub fascia and the 716 OSB sheet for the roof, but I had for some reason missed this step. I went ahead and trimmed off the excess of the siding board using a straight bit on a router. Here you can see the issue, an open corner gap. If I had followed the correct order, the OSB would have butt up against the siding and then the siding would then be trimmed away. This could have been an issue if I was using a low profile drip edge as I would not have enough material to nail into. But because I was using a wider profile drip edge, it wasn't a huge deal. I then cut out some pieces using the scrap leftovers to fill in the gaps for when I would install the 1x6 basic trim. I installed the sides first, then the front, and then the back. Next was to install the soffits and soffit vents. This is the piece that would cover up the opening on the underside of the rafters. The soffit vents are to help make the shed breathable and provide some air circulation.
For the exterior trim, I just used some leftover 1x4 fencing cedar trim I had laying around. There are other better, more expensive options like fiber cement and PVC trim if you want something that will better withstand the outside conditions. I then laid out the framing for the door and screwed it using some 3.5 inch screws. After it was squared, I slid over the leftover siding that was left over from the door cutout. Then trimmed about 3 sixteenths on each side. This would give me the clearance needed for the door. Then nailed it in and added the 1x4 trim pieces. I also gave the cedar trim a quick sand to knock off any wood that was sticking up. To install the door, I added some scrap plate that I added up to 3 8 of an inch. Then added a quarter inch spacer on the side of the door. This would give me an even or so gap around the door. Then pre-install the hinges and door handle. To give the shed a clean finish, I caulked the nail heads along with the trim and shed walls. After it was dry, I used my airless sprayer to prime and paint the shed. Not necessary as a paintbrush or roller would have been more than enough. But I had one so I figured why not. For the primer, I used Zenzer 123, a water-based primer, but later found out that I needed to use an oil-based stain blocking primer to help prevent the cedar wood from bleeding through the paint. After running low on paint, I realized I just needed to prime the cedar trim because the shed walls were already pre-primed from factory. After letting the two coats of primer dry, I then lay down some leftover Sherwin Super Paint exterior paint from when I first painted my house. The next day, I went back and touched up the trimming using the correct oil-based stain blocking primer. I then top coated it with semi-gloss exterior paint using a 3 inch roller and brush. Next I installed the first stripped edge and nailed it down about 1 inch away from the end using one and a quarter roofing nails. Then I installed the underlayment and then overlapped the second sheet per the manufacturer. I used the same roofing nails but I know they make special plastic round roofing nails for it. Next, I installed the drip edge to the sides, making sure it overlapped the first one. Then cut out and installed the starter shares, making sure I left about 3 eighths of an overhang. I only installed them at the bottom, but it would have probably been a good idea to install them on the sides as well. Next, I made the first set of five rows I needed for the architecture shingles using this pattern layout. This made installation super easy to make cutting effortlessly. I wanted to try out this tip I saw online. It was to attach a hook blade to a multi-tool. And I've got to say, out of all the three methods I've used, this was the easiest and gave me the cleanest cut edge. I also used this method when I had to trim off the excess shingles that overhang off the roof. I then aligned and installed the first full sh shingle using the nail guide line that was marked on each shingle. I made sure to check where the nails landed and that it didn't fall in line with the edge of the next shingle that would be nailed above. After the first five rows were nailed in, I used the same cut method I did before, then continued up until I had full coverage. Next was to cap the back end. I used the same piece of drip edge, but ideally you want to use a minimum of 3x3 L-style roofing flashing. 
but because my house roof extended over this by about a foot, I figured it would be fine. I placed some roofing adhesive on the back side of the drip edge to seal it in, then used some roofing screws to fasten it down. Now with the roof complete, uh, let's take a moment and step back and see how this shed turned out. I've got to say, after building my first shed, I was really happy how it turned out. I learned so much doing it myself, and I hope that this video inspires you to build your own or pushes you to build something outside of your comfort zone. I can now enjoy having a quieter shop to design, build, and document my process. If you're interested in what you see here, I left links to the resources and the PDF build plans for the 3x4 and 3x6 shed in the description below. If you have any questions, ask, and I'll do my best to answer. If you'd like to see more videos like this, uh, leave me a comment and subscribe if you haven't already. With that out of the way, time to get to the next project.